Welcome to our audience on KTN Home, who will be with us for the next 55, 56, or 59 minutes. And also, we are live on Spice FM. We are also live on uh, Spice FM KE YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, www.spicefm.co.ke. CT Muga, today's proverb. When there is no enemy within, the enemy outside cannot hurt you. When there is no enemy within, the enemy outside cannot hurt you. Mm -hmm. It's always an inside job. Uh, most probably is, yes. Mm. The likelihood of... Why do you think, for instance, mm. that uh, spying is the second oldest profession in the world? Mm -hmm. Simply because it has long been understood that when you're talking about intelligence, you need someone on the inside to be giving you information that ordinarily you wouldn't have. Mm. Yes. And that is what perhaps guides uh, any program that somebody may have that has to do with progress. In fact, what we're going to discuss this morning, there's a, an entire world out there of people who deal in nothing but intelligence that relates to innovation. Right. Yes. They, it's like they sit back and wait for other people to come up with this and then they make sure that they understand it and then they tweak it to serve their purposes. Others steal the secrets before you even roll and them no, out. It would not be possible if someone who works for that particular outfit was not culpable or was not aligned towards giving you the information you need. It's going to be a double agent, a yeah. sleeper agent somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, you've given it a nice dramatic a twist. Traitor. Yes. As always. Yes. A traitor, <laughs> so to speak. So let's talk about innovation. The Kenya National Innovation Agency is basically a state organ. And joining us this morning is the CEO of this particular agency, Dr. Tony Omwansa. So Kenya National Innovation Agency is Kenya. Yeah, Kenya. In the Republic of Kenya. Yeah. <laughs> Confuse a lot of people between Kenya and Ken Kenya. And Kenya. Because, <laughs> you know, in French, Kenya is spelled like that. Oh, yeah, 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 Kenya. Yeah, yeah, Kenya. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... We so are Kenya. to something here. So <laughs> when, people, when people ask you, where do you work? I work in Kenya. Um, and and in some places, actually, <laughs> when you meet, like maybe in Europe, you get people who call it, who call Kenya. 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 Mm. Yeah. So. The Nya word or the Nya syllable or the Nya pronunciation is difficult on many tongues. Yes. Correct. It doesn't roll off very easily. Correct. The Nya is easier, easier. Yeah. Uh, to, to, to sort of like wade through the Nya. Mm -hmm. Yes. You tell them Nya and yeah, they tell you Nya. Nya. So you figure, okay, in their head, I'm sure they, they believe they have said nya. So let's just go mm. with the flow. So mtoto mdogo ananionia. Yes, that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Mwansa, what yes. is innovation? All right. Even before we talk about the Kenya, mm -hmm. what is innovation? Okay. Mm. Um, it depends on the school of thought you come from. Mm. I have mine, and my small school of thought tells me innovation is simply change that adds value. Change that has value simply says there has to be change from point A to some point B. Mm. And in the course of that change, there has to be value created. Now, who determines the value is the person who consumes that innovation. That mm. is for sure, either has reduced some pain point or an, 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 has enhanced the quality of life in some way. Mm. So you know, there's something better than has to, that has to come out of that. Okay. All right, so I'll stop there. Because now what we choose to do with that innovation that has been created is a different story. Mm. We can hang it somewhere. We can convert it into product, into a service, into a business, whatever. Um, and it doesn't have to be a product. You know, some people always say it has to be some gadget. Tangible. Yeah, tangible, touch and feel, yeah? Mm. But it could be, it could be a service, it could be a process. Even the way you reorganize this room can translate to some form of innovation. Mm -hmm. Could be an idea. It could be just an idea, but needs to be taken to a sudden point, <laughs> all right, <laughs> for it to make sense. Otherwise, it can just be a hobby or a nice feeling. Mm. Right. Yeah. So you have to look at something that then is developed. Yes. After it, you've come up with it, it must be developed for it to be something. Yeah, something that we, w someone can put money into. Right. <laughs> All right. Someone mm -hmm. can buy. Mm -hmm. All right. Someone can want to own. Mm -hmm. Then innovation starts to make a lot more sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, because I've seen some questions and, and some conversation a lot uh, happening around about, you know, I have some great idea. Of course. Of course it always and I'm really innovative. You know, <laughs> like we've got a lot of innovations around here. Mm. Um, 
it just could be a fancy thing, nice looking thing, but never changes the world. Does it add value? Exactly. Okay. So it's got to add value. Now, so what do you do then on a daily basis at the Kenya National Innovation Agency? What What is the job of this agency? Okay. So the agency, as you rightfully said, was established by an act of parliament. Um, it's among the th three agencies that were set up by an act of parliament of SDI 2013. Uh, one is the National Commission for Science, Technology and Innovation. And the other one is the National Research Fund. Then the third one is uh, the National Innovation Agency. It's the youngest of the three. Mm. Uh, and was set up to develop and manage the national innovation system. I wasn't there when they were framing oh, those because words. Because you knew the next question that was coming before you, <laughs> <laughs> before you now did. <laughs> All right. Develop and manage the national, national innovation, innovation system. system. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very, very heavy loaded yes. uh, uh, words. Mm. I've been there for about seven months now. Uh, there has been an acting CEO. But let's, let's blow that up a little bit. When we say develop and manage the national innovation system, probably a good place to start is what that innovation system is. Mm. And when you say you're developing it, what are the things you would do on a day-to-day -day basis? Mm. So there are about 20 or so functions defined there. When you say system, it means several components that are interacting and, uh, and, uh, and engaging to translate to something. All right? Mm. Um, and when you say national innovation system, you're talking about academic institution, uh, intellectual property agencies, you know, financial institutions, businesses, and so on and so forth. And the consumer is somewhere also in that equation, all right? And you need policy, you need funding, mm. you need uh, awareness, uh, you need dissemination, um, you need incubation, you need a scouting mechanism to mm. harvest, mm. Uh, and so on and so forth. You need enforcement and protection. Exactly. All right, mm. and make sure, uh, like you said, uh, the enemy outside, you know, does not take, uh, take advantage. Mm. So those are the things that the agency is uh, meant to, is doing, or meant to be doing. And uh, that's what I have to think about every day as I get up. Mm. How far I am in getting to that getting destination, uh, it's probably part of our discussion today. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, how far the agency has gone, it's mm. a young agency, so we will also have to be a little bit fair with the agency. Uh, but we're making quite some progress in that Actually, regard. no. <coughs> we, no, we will not be fair to the agency. Innovation has to do with new things. Yes. And the thing that the advantage you have when you have something new is that there is nothing to compare you with. Thank you. So... I, I'm, I'm, that, is, that is the fairness actually I was referring to. Oh, so don't compare, don't compare him to anybody don't else. Don't compare me with anybody yet. Oh, no. Actually, I'm <laughs> comparing him with other entities that we didn't have to compare anything with. And I'm saying mm. he has an advantage, uh -huh. a huge advantage mm. yes. that, you know, institutions that have been in existence don't have. Uh, yes. These uncharted waters gives you the opening to, to do things and to start things that ordinarily you'd have enormous difficulty doing because you would be compared. Mm. Yes. That is why I said no. Fair enough. Fair enough. Very well put. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, having stated the obvious advantage that you now have, yes. how are you making hay while this particular uh, sunshine is shining? What are you doing with this opportunity? All right. Great. Beyond thinking and waking up every morning with a headache, what are you doing? What am I doing? Yes. All right. So if you look at the mission... In other words, what are you really trying to do, yeah? Yes. It, it will take that mandate to develop and manage the national innovation system yes. that facilitates taking ideas to market. Yes. So if I'm going to be measured, it will be a question of how successful are you in taking ideas to market, mm -hmm. yep. all right? Yep. Um, we start with where are the ideas, all right? And mm -hmm. that's the first question because I've got to scout those ideas mm -hmm. and then figure out the kind of support system they need and then I see them in the market, all right? That also requires a bit of disruption in terms of the way we look at the world and so forth. But the fa one of the greatest places to start is institutions where you'll get a lot of young people, mm -hmm. all right? Uh, and that comes universities, comes research centers, comes TVETs and so on and so forth. So we have a lot of engagements right now uh, with institutions in helping them to organize because I can't do it myself. It takes the system uh, to be organized to get that. So a lot of engagement and supporting institutions to set up their intellectual property policies, um, the commercialization policies, uh, and then execute on them. 
Um, then, uh, when it comes to funding, we've done quite some lobbying around uh, resources <coughs> to support the innovation system. Um, and we are growing in that regard, both from government as well as, uh, you know, partners, uh, you know, private sector, as well as uh, even development partners, development banks and so forth. Mm. Um, the other dimension to this is the incubation. Because, you see, if I get the idea, you get ideas, mm -hmm. you are not going to come to Kenya. I, I don't even have a place to incubate you. You know the mother's mm. boom, mm. right? Mm. Got to stay there for how many months? Ten. Uh, ten, yeah, for the very productive ones, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're in there for ten months, the mother need to be able to give you what you need. Uh, they chew the food for you and then give you and so forth. Yep. So the other narrative that we are working very aggressively is how to consolidate and organize the national incubation framework. Mm. So that if you have a brilliant idea in Kisumu, Usipandegari Ukuja, Kenya, mm. no, you go to that incubation hub that is actually by the lakeside. And do and then be nurtured there. Right. And my job as Kenya is to make sure that that incubation hub is doing a right job, uh -huh. fair to you, and fair to society. Okay, what are what are some of the things that are currently happening now, um, in terms of some of these projects? Even before you have this incubation hub and such, what kind of support are you lending? Give us one one or two examples of projects um, that need this, because even as yeah. you speak now about innovation, there's a plethora of. Yeah. Of, mm -hmm. of ideas in ideas in the yes. country currently yes so what are two or three that you're currently working on classic uh, examples because we can't also wait for that entire system to function mm -hmm. of course there are hubs over a hundred of them and we are in touch with them in many ways but at the agency we've got a fund one we call national innovation award mm -hmm. so this one uh, for example this year we're focusing on the big four agenda well we basically run a call identify as many progressive ideas as possible, go through achieving mechanisms and so forth, and finally award. And we don't directly kind of like give the funds, but we work through the incubation hubs that exist out there so that the funds can be in a constructive way be used to support that business okay. idea. Okay, so that's one. The second one we run is called the uh, National uh, the Innovation Fellowship. All right. Mm -hmm. So the Innovation Fellowship is because we realize also that if you have an idea, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily become a business. And the process of converting a beautiful idea into a business is, is a process because you have to think through the value proposition, your customer segmentation, you know, the competition like, uh, routes to market, packaging, uh, and all that stuff. So the fellowship program basically takes you through an eight or so months training, um, and we work very closely with the UK government, uh, building as much capacity and ensure you build the right team. Mm. Because it doesn't mean that if I'm a scientist and have a brilliant idea, I'm necessarily going to make the best entrepreneur in town. Sure. All right? So help you build the complementary skills uh, through a team and then develop that process uh, into a business. And then you get funding mm -hmm. and we support that. We work very closely with an institution called National Research Fund and we get the funding for it. So classic example of another idea that we run. The third one is what we call uh, the Kenya Innovation Academy. Uh, you know, we've realized skills is going to be a big deal. And helping people to appreciate on how they develop their policies or, 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 or manage their uh, intellectual property uh, and the exploitation of the same and making sure they don't get exposed and so on and so forth. Um, so we've got a set of workshops and seminars and trainings that we do through the, um, the academy. Uh, and I can go on a few more, but uh, you asked for three. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, I mean, I mean, just a, a question connected to that. In yeah. the last few weeks, we've had very many conversations yes. about things in this country that are stuck at their rudimentary stage. Yes. Right? Whether we're looking at the tea sector, whether we're looking at the coffee sector, and we're looking at the fact that people, uh, countries out there are taking uh, a, a natural resource from here. Yes. And because of the fact that we're unable to innovate here, yes. then we cannot apply any kind of value add to it. How plugged in is the agency to existing systems um, to bring about this innovation that's going to help the country on a whole economically? Let me disrupt, let me flip that question a little because you said something we cannot innovate here. Well, we were not. We haven't been able we to. We haven't been able to innovate here. Okay. It's not happening. Then the question is, why not? Yep. Mm. Because if we can answer that question, mm. then we ask ourselves, what is Kenya's role in that why not? But is mm. it a statement of truth that we have not been able to innovate here? Uh, are you asking if yes, it is? Yes, yes. Um, I, I disagree to some degree. I actually disagree completely, but mm. anyway, carry on. Tell me about Thank the you. 
Uh, because, uh, you know, I'm also being very careful, uh, you know, how Why? I manage, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 now, some things are not right, and it is not. And I can list you a couple of things. Mm. Let me just ask a simple question to the three of you: um, How many of you attended a class on intellectual property management? I have not. You attended mm. one out of three. Mm. I have also attended. I just didn't put up my finger. <laughs> oh, but I have attended you not even one. Uh -huh. Several. Several. Okay. Yes. Now, when I ask this question generally in many forums, uh, private sector, academia, and so on and so forth, I get the minority are the ones who raise up their hand. Mm -hmm. Already starts to tell me something. The sense that we have intellectual property that needs to be protected and exploited is very low. Mm -hmm. The appreciation of it. Now, when you don't know what you have, you already have a problem mm -hmm. because someone else comes out from outside and sees it and takes advantage of it. Mm -hmm. That's one issue. So awareness, skills, appreciation, and so forth. Second is, uh, you know, short term versus long term, mm. all right? Like, there is always a temptation to think about what can I do in quick, quick gains vis-a-vis -vis thinking about longer term and being more nationalistic in the way you look at things. Uh, and that has been a challenge in, in a number of these institutions uh, and in some of those sectors and so forth. Um, and that's why I say we've established a Kenya Innovation Academy because one of the first things we have to, one of the things we are trying to do as much as possible is educate, expose, empower, all right? Because if I do that and then we set up in innovation champions in institutions, all right? They could be KTDA, for example. Mm -hmm. mm. You have an innovation champion there because as Kenya, I cannot come and run the show there. I probably might not be able to scout effectively what opportunities exist. There has to be someone who is on the lookout aggressively and guiding everyone on how to manage that intellectual property. Mm. Mm. So let me, I've pointed to the issue of awareness and skills and capacity. Great. In terms of short-sightedness, um, and then I'll go to the, the third dimension whereby probably we mis, mis, misallocate uh, resources uh, based on what the priorities we think are. You see, if I'm, in, I'm the accounting officer, right, an institution, mm. depending on how I see the possibility and I lead the constituents and the congregation in a certain direction, it all depends on my background and appreciation. Mm. So I, I have asked this couple of questions about how many CEOs appreciate that there is an, an opportunity here in terms of intellectual property and its exploitation. Mm -hmm. You are not necessarily going to get uh, a lot of positive feedback in that regard. So there, there is need to create a movement. For me, I'm calling it a movement. There is need to create a movement of a lot of us who appreciate and then take some action about it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Terry? Yes. I want you to pause for a second and ask yourself, you see, what you are referring to as I hear you, is something that is nestled in academia, okay? Intellectual property rights, yes. However, mm -hmm. there is a nascent connection that needs to be there between what you know and understand to be innovation, mm -hmm. which may exist in many spheres in our community, mm -hmm. but is not recognized as innovation mm -hmm. or isn't seen as mm -hmm. or isn't appreciated. Mm -hmm. Where I'm going with my discussion mm -hmm. is I'm going back to the issue of funding of research. Mm -hmm. And funding of research and the importance that is placed on it has to do with understanding research and its importance. Mm -hmm. Then comes my question. Mm -hmm. When government allocates money to your institution, mm -hmm. when you work with the Kenya National Research Fund, Fund right. how much money is there available? Because the availability of that money will tell you the importance we place on this thing. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. All right. So, um, the National Research Fund, when the conceptualization of the SDI Act was in place, mm. the goal was to put in as much as 2% of our GDP into research. <laughs> All right. Now, are we there? No. Are we? How close are we? Quite far. Mm. All right. Now, that in a way begins to point to how well have we prioritized as uh, leadership, so to speak. Um, but then also goes further to the question, how are our system? You know, I've always asked my question, I, I sometimes a question, if I'm giving you resources to manage research, uh, maybe not manage research, but if I'm just giving you resources to do something, because I trust you're capable of doing it, you've got the systems in place, you've got the manpower in place, you've got the skills in place, and so forth. 
In other words, I'm wondering what is the reason why we don't have, uh, you know, as much as 2%. And we can, we can analyze that very, very broadly. But I also think that it is important not to only concentrate on what the government can do. It is also what other players can do. Mm. How much does private sector get in, in, involved and how much does uh, development uh, agencies get involved? That, that, that is another that, discussion. There are countries day. that have progressed in the field of innovation. Yes, there is some significant private sector involvement, mm. but it is from the background that those governments understand the importance and they play an even bigger role. Mm. Especially in terms of support yes. and yes. giving a skeletal uh, support to the entire process. You will mm. find that when you have them who have ranked up high in terms of innovation and creation of the same, they have this government support. Yes, I agree with you. I when, agree with you. Look. When you talk about funding, for instance, yes. why is it that a country like ours is still very dependent mm. when it comes to research mm. on funding that comes from outside the country? Why? Because and, those and countries... It, and it's not private sector funding. No, it's no, not. It's, not. It's, it's, it's taxpayer funded. Taxpayer funded. Yes. Why? Because they have understood the importance of it. And the importance is not just the availability of the funds, yes. but the ease with which you can, you access, can access it. it. Because mm. talk, even if it's 1%, yes. Even if it's 20% and you can't access it, yes. it is useless. It is not useful. Yes. True. So, True. How did I mention about systems? You did mention yes. about systems. In fact, you actually went to town uh, on the issue of systems. But <laughs> 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 to develop yes. and manage <laughs> national innovation, innovation system. system. Yes. That's the main job of yes. the Kenya National Innovation Agency. Let's take yes. a break at this point. We're having a conversation with Dr. Tony Mwansa. He is the CEO of Kenya. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Whoa, make sure I don't get a call from State House. <laughs> the CEO of the Kenya National Innovation Agency. Dr. Mwansa, you said that uh, you were established through an act of parliament and there were three siblings born on the same day. Yours dealing with innovation, someone else dealing with research, and the other, th the third one was? It's more regulation and policy and, and, and monitoring and evolution, kind of more like regulation kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. I'd assume that the three of you work. Uh, close one yes, another we do. close yes we do because i'm thinking when we talk about uh, getting not just an idea but developing an idea it starts with an idea mm -hmm. it starts from an idea stage and then somebody thinks let me try it out so there's mm -hmm. some research that's done some trialing some some uh, modeling and then mm -hmm. getting to a proof of concept you mm -hmm. go into incubation and you then develop mm -hmm. that initial stage is a bottleneck for very many people it's true and I think that's all the same thing that uh, CT was talking about. At that initial stage where I have an idea, but I need the resources to mm -hmm. be able to move that idea from my head to somewhere on the table. True. <clears throat> what support do you offer at that point? Okay. Uh, I'll want to modify a little bit. that mm. we, I don't want us to start with ideas. Mm. I want us to start with problems. Okay. The reason is when you solve a problem, you reduce someone's pain point. Or you, cre you, you make them happier, cheap, you know, they find things cheaper, faster, and so on and so forth. So I think falling in love with problems is what we need to do more and mm. not falling in love with ideas. What I mean again is, you know, idea can get excited about something, all right? But that doesn't necessarily, I'm you, not saying I, always. I, I want you to repeat that again because you have enunciated a very fundamental truth. We should fall in love with problems. Mm. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and not ideas. Mm. Yes. Okay. I've got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because many a time we can fall in love with ideas that are potentially never going to scale. Mm. Because I'm excited about something. Whoa, this is a drone. I can make a cheap drone. But who told you a Chinese wouldn't make it 10 times cheaper? Mm. All right. And then what problem are we going to solve? And the bigger the problem we can solve, the more users we can address their pain point the more they might be able to pay mm. and the more they are likely we are likely to make something sustainable mm. okay so funding to problems yes <laughs> so the to first solving problem to solving problems uh -huh. exactly so first of all of course uh, well there is funding working very closely with the national research fund there is quite some funding and mm. it goes to institutions now that's the second part that is a little bit uh, of, a, of a narrow path mm. because you have to have a system through which you will monitor and in many cases, the National Research Fund, just like Kenya, would work through institutions. Mm. And therefore, the researcher or the person who's trying to innovate would work through the institutions as well. Mm. 
Um, so that's the model. And, and there's quite some resources. And all that happens is that, you know, this is public funds. It means there has to be transparency around it, publicity, advertise, people apply. You get a competent team to review, uh, then shortlist, and then finally uh, the management sh makes proposals to the board, the board approves disbursement. Mm. There are strengths and weaknesses of such of our systems. And let's face it. Um, part of that is because when you're running government funding, you are, are going to be aligned to certain regulations. Mm. Yesterday, I was talking to someone from UAE, uh, Dubai, and he told me that the government agency established a limited liability company which disburses funds. Uh -huh. Because they can be agile, they can be flexible, they can take equity in those businesses, they can closely monitor, they can be extremely privatized in their approach. Government owns a private entity to do just that. We are not there yet. Uh, but just to answer that question, we, are, we, we have that mechanism providing funding. But I want to go back to this issue of problem versus ideas a little bit. Huh? Mm. Part of the reason why many people don't get funding, even when they have ideas, is because someone gets to evaluate the idea and you don't see the probability of scaling. Because if we're going to put resources into uh, polishing an idea and then it gets to look nice, if it's never going to translate to return on investment, mm. um, the likelihood that people will jump at it are low. Yep. Let me also flip that question to the three of you. How many of you have funded ideas? Have funded ideas with what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you fund ideas without even realizing. Uh -huh. if, ah, that's if, what I've asked. If, if, you to, if you want to yeah. break it down to the basics, uh -huh. if you I have know, a child, that's an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Categorize okay. your yes. question. Okay, fine. What are we talking so, about here? You see a guy on television, or you mm. walk in your rural place and you find this guy creating some nice uh, system, you mm. know, or the mm. future of Nairobi or something, something. You get excited and put 20,000 shillings. Mm. And you probably say, when it grows up, you will give me back my money with mm. some interest. Yep. Mm. Have you done that? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Now, many Did people... It grow but, up? Yeah? It's, it's growing. <laughs> it's growing. It's, it's a good feeling, eh? Eventually. <laughs> All right. Wild over, you start with... The, when you are the initial stages of a concept, mm. because it's a risk to put money into something that is kind of starting to shape. Right. All right? That's why you rely more on friends and family. And it's, yes. it's just natural. And then slowly, as the system begins to take, then someone with bigger money gets excited and like, okay, now I can put in <coughs> and so forth. Yep. So it is important. I'm pointing to one very important point there. The private sector and individuals have to play a very critical role in supporting the ideas to take off. Let's just use the word for idea mm. for that matter. Mm. Again, let's also consider that government is also limited in terms of the resources that they can give in terms of awards or grants. By the way, government is very good at taking the early risk. Because uh, it's kind of like taxpayers' money and you're like, okay, fine, we'll support, good idea, yeah, yeah, yeah. So government is very good at taking early risk, all right? Mm. But then later, private sector has to take off yep. in, in, in support that scaling. So there is, the, there is the challenge that the agencies will always have about sieving and making sure you get guys who look like they're heading somewhere. And that means most likely a friend... A family member and somebody may have put some initial or personal savings may mm. have developed that idea up to a certain point. Mm. Then you can evaluate. And that it happens all the time. By True. the way, I mean, everybody is an angel investor in this country. Somebody will come to you with an idea. You'll yes. think of an idea. You'll talk to somebody. You'll talk to a family friend. You'll talk to a family member, and then they'll finance you. They'll give you some sort of support, even True. if that support is giving you a corner somewhere in their shop, and they tell you just operate from there, mm -hmm. and you don't have to pay rent. That is still part of uh, yes. supporting that Early ideation support, stage. Yes. But you know, Dr. Terry, mm. you were not entirely right when you said we are not there. We were there a long time ago. Uh -huh. We just rolled back time. There was an organization, there still is, known as ICDC. Yes. Mm. Yes. Government corporation, but private. Yep. Meaning it functioned as a private and it did because it was involved in investments. Yep. Mm. This Uchumi that died and died and died again, it's not just Uchumi. There was hardly anything. ICDs was involved in transportation. It was involved in farm. It was involved in every aspect of business. It, mm. it was, to be honest, it was an idea that some of those Asian tigers that we speak about mm. saw. And then it was sort of a private, a, a private uh, entity, a private owned by company yes. owned by, by government that then would support. Yes. Those are the Kenya industrial estates. Yep. You see, if you look at the way the Chinese and the, and, the, and, the, and the Japanese governments work, 
any of these big corporations that you think are private, there's a government hand in it. That's why they're that successful. Mm. It's an idea. And you know when we formed ICDC in 1954? Okay. Yes. But it was allowed to die. It owned beach hotels. It, uh, what it did, had it just gone through the natural process of growing and benefiting Kenyans, my friend, w this discussion we're having now, Wouldn't it would be on a different scale. We'd yeah, talk about innovation, uh -huh. mm. but we'd be talking about scale. next stages in this great innovation that this country has. Mm. But I just thought I would mention that. I think that's a, that's a very valuable point. Surprisingly, yes. but the ICDC is still alive. Oh, it's Somewhere. still alive, yes. <laughs> it, it's still alive, but, but limbs. It's old. It was born in 1954. 54. You can imagine. It is without limbs. It's, 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 it's about the things they do. Yes. Now, when you talk about innovation, mm. uh, there's something that I, I, I have to bring up. Mm. You see, we have in this country what we now are calling our own a Kenya Innovation Initiative, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, the regional body, it's called the Africa Regional Intellectual Property Organization, is nestled in Harare. Mm -hmm. Now, we may not know this, but the director who heads exactly a Kenyan mm -hmm. is called John Kabare. Mm -hmm. okay? Now, tell me, how do we work as Kenyans? Let's say I have an innovation, and you see, this organization represents 21 African countries, and I want mm -hmm. this property rights. I want it... I want, want to secure it not just in the country. No, no, no. I want to in all the countries yes. that, yes. How does our organization in this country help a Kenyan innovator get to that stage? So that it's not just protected in Kenya, but it's protected in the other 21 African countries mm -hmm. that share this particular platform mm -hmm. that is nestled in Harare. Okay, so two dimensions uh, to, to that question. Um, the first one is... The Harare-based institution oversees the African network. Yes, it does. And countries are expected to have institutions and then provide services to their own people. And Correct. link to the global, to the, to, to the regional, and there is the also global the global. One. Correct. Correct. The yes. Yes. Now, in Kenya, you have KIPI. Mm. Mm. All right. Kenya, Kenya Institute of... Kenya Intellectual, Intellectual Property, Property, Property Institute. institution. Mm. Yes. Um, mandated with what? The registration protection of, of intellectual property and we also yes. have kekobo kenya corporate board right on, yep. on corporate matters so this is this is these two institutions are the ones that are actually meant to provide that local support all right how well they are enabled and and empowered that's again another discussion that we can have mm -hmm. um and how how effective they have been i think it's, a, it's, it's there's a lot of room for for improvement the last time I visited Kipi, I got a sense that we don't have regional offices. Because if I'm in Man Mandera and I need to register something, then you're almost telling me to go to Nairobi. Mm. All right? Uh, you start having a certain problem. Mm. Why institutions are meant to have intellectual property offices, all right? If I go to Moi University, I am supposed to find an IP office, mm. right? Which links to Kipi, which links to the Africa, which links to global, all right? Mm. Ideally, that's how the system is supposed to be. But... Um, not many institutions have established the intellectual property offices. I've done a little bit of a survey so far. It could be anywhere around 20%. And having even the policies at the institutional level uh, that then guide that uh, local level engagement uh, on, on the way up, we're not far yet. Um, probably another 15% or so. And part of the things I have set out as, as, as I got into office is that we've got to fix that. You see, what you had, the, yeah. the institution you had, yes will be dead in the waters yes. if this aspect of intellectual property rights yes. is not secure. Yep. Correct. In my, if, if, because if what I look at it now, it's a vehicle that ought to move and there are no wheels. Yeah. So if you don't have your basic structure, yes. some of these, because how do you innovate when you don't even have things like intellectual property set in place? If the mechanics for which this thing is supposed to move do not exist, or where they do exist, it's very low in terms <coughs> of percentage yeah. and penetration. Yeah. How is it supposed to happen? Yeah. So we, we say all these nice things like yeah. creation yes. and innovation yes. and things like that. It sounds great, yes. but it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere that because we've not done the foundation. True. How is it supposed to happen if you don't have you know structural structure across? Yes. Then Just how will the innovation come about? Thrive. So someone else will say, that's exactly why we set that institution and that's exactly why we hired you as that a CEO. Mm. Fix it. So now you're the ah, Mr. Fix it. I like that idea <laughs> because well, 
It may mean <coughs> wading into someone's territory. Mm. A little bit. Making it may. It but could go. be synergize. It, that's now. Collaborate. That's what it should Innovate. be. Called. Innovate. Innovate. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> because remember, we're trying to do what? Develop the national innovation system. Yes. You cannot develop without the various wheels as you described. Mm. It, all right? So it is in my interest to see that as many institutions as possible have intellectual property policies. Yep. Okay. Well integrated and mainstreamed into the system. Mm. Precisely. Now you see, Aripo, the African uh, Regional Intellectual Property Organization, yes. actually helps in training people. The very processes that get you to understand to the point where you know how it is established, they do have facilities of Absolutely. that nature. And they draw their strength from their having plugged into the global organization that deals with property rights. True. Now, I am saying with the very, very should we say, delightful prospect of the newness of your organization. Mm -hmm. You are the one who has this opportunity that very many people don't have. I agree with it. To do all these things that we are saying. Absolutely. So now let me ask my question. Mm -hmm. What are your plans? Oh, super. Now, when I look through the 20 functions that Kenya has, mm. I've and also looked at the strategic plan yes. of the institution, which is about six or so pillars, mm -hmm. I have summed up this into true commercialization, startup movement enhancement. Mm -hmm. Those are two things I'm going to have to do over the next few years. God give me the life and the energy. Mm -hmm. When I say commercialization, I'm talking about ability to move well thought out research into commercial value. And that becomes enterprises, spin-offs, um, joint ventures with some private sector institutions and so on and so forth. So we've prioritized commercialization. To succeed in this commercialization, it means that wherever intellectual property can be created, I am going to be there mm. to ensure you've got the right systems, the right incentives. You know, the other day I asked a question, Mr. Professor, you are an associate professor. If you created a startup, would you be promoted to be a full professor? Mm. And the answer was no. No. So then what is the incentive of building a startup mm -hmm. or commercializing your research? Because then it means our system is going to prom it's going to recognize a publication, yeah. right. but not recognize enterprise, enterprise. creation. Mm -hmm. Then I think we've got a little problem there. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm making a professor to become an entrepreneur. No, but I'm just saying, be interested in it. And we can do have joint ventures. Mm -hmm. You know, we can spin off Actually, all those things. The, by the time you have that title of professor, yes. you really have to be an innovator. Mm. Because you needed to have documented some ideas that you had yes. and the full fruition of those ideas. Uh -huh. that, what we call publications. Yes. Yes. So you cannot be that without this. Uh -huh. Now, if you take it to the next level, uh -huh. as you're saying, that's when you bring in the element of commercialization. Thank you. Yes. So that's where commercialization is very important to mm. me because I've been to Kipi. We have a lot of intellectual property protected. Yes. But did, we didn't, the system was not designed to commercialize. Mm. And, and th that doesn't help us a lot because when you look at the global ranking on innovation where we rank somewhere around 87, it is about, even when you look at the vision 2030, it's about making people's lives better. Bottom yes. line, do research so that people's lives better. Actually, if you stop at the intellectual property, mm. if you stop at the publication, then we are doing injustice to ourselves. Mm. All right. So that's why commercialization ranks very high. And I'm mm -hmm. working very close with TVETs and reaching out to vice chancellors in universities and research centers and so on and so forth. Then one of there are several spin-offs that we can get out of here. You know, the startups and whatever, whatever else, joint ventures and so forth. Now I'm very interested in the narrative of startups mm -hmm. because Startups are basically evolving from the idea <laughs> that have solved a problem, mm -hmm. all right? And because there are enough people who had that problem, then you're creating a solution for so many people. And the, prob the relief that you're creating is so valuable that they're willing to go into their pocket and pay for it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Then you're creating an enterprise that is potentially scalable and goes beyond the borders of Kenya. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. That, that makes a lot of sense. And when it can scale, private sector, VC, angel investors will jump at it and say, let's, let's give you more funds. Let's support you. That is an area I'm very interested in. And a classic example of why I'm very interested in it is mm. you have put in money in some good idea somewhere. So maybe I'll call you a nice person. Mm. But I also want to gravitate you to an angel investor. Mm -hmm. Investor, which means you're looking for return on investment. Where women know shamba, I'm sure you're plots you came out. Mingi. <laughs> All right? You're going to title Mingi sana. Kenya Muzima. But you don't... <laughs> 50 by 100. <laughs> but you're going to... 
Ingine hata huko sure if it is 50. But I also want to see you become an angel investor. Mm -hmm. Which means you're willing to invest invest in an idea mm. and an and a startup. And the more of us can do that, then we can channel resources into the growth of the startups. Take the risk because everything is risk. It's a risk. Yeah. All right? Mm. So it's a risk. It can go positive and so anyway. But what you need is more education so that you appreciate what does it really mean to be an angel investor. Mm. How do you, because you don't put in money and walk away. You put in money and provide the necessary support, whether directly or through other people and yep. so on and so forth. Yep. And that's why I'm interested in this area, because if I can show more startups in the course of time, then that's a good measure of success of the agency. Looking at these startups uh, and looking at then what the agency is doing in the country so far, yep. can let's call them the problem solvers now as yes. opposed to the idea generators yes can the problem solvers rest assured that they have enough support in this country with the agency as it stands today enough is relative can i stand up and come to the agency and be sure that i will get support or must or will i have to as is the norm right now have to depend on some kind of external support when you say external means uh, you know like i know so many uh, problem solvers today okay. whose support whose uh, um, management comes from external sources in terms of uh, funding in terms of management support thereafter it's a foreign foreign from a foreign, ah. from a foreign, funder. foreign. Mm. so see see the thing is and that takes us back to the question about how much funding is available to this bus mm. Mm. you see that's an issue that is outside my control we're lobbying all we can mm. uh and educating uh policymakers and uh, parliamentary committees and treasury and so on and so forth mm. about the value of going this way uh, and that also takes a little bit of time sometime mm. uh, it depends on who is in office how well did they get it and so on and so forth yeah. uh, through the national research fund we've got some reason money to fund uh, you know research but i think there's lots of room for improvement mm. now but in terms of the system at kenya which i can confidently say we build we've built some fairly robust mechanism to mm. guarantee that if you have a brilliant solution to a problem you'll get support within our capacity and confines but there is also nothing wrong i think it is important Pete, to also to pick there is nothing wrong in seeking resources from multiple sources. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing wrong. I mean, you, you, you have a mortgage. Maybe you are from Bank X. Mm. Then you, you got another product. You go to a circle. Yeah. All these things enable you uh, because different products enable you to achieve certain uh, you know, mm. targets and so forth. Mm. So there's nothing wrong. It's just that th there is a general feeling that the success seemingly leaning towards external support and yeah. and that's not a good state of affairs for sure and mm. we've got to gradually fix that i think we've got a lot of work to do like you said oh, yeah. in even making people because there are very many investors when an ipo is announced today it will be oversubscribed oh yeah and by kenyans true when uh, the central bank goes to the market looking for a loan in terms of uh, bonds or, or they get oversubscribed people are willing to put money somewhere yeah. If you show the value in yes. investing in a startup, yes. in that uh, um, problem-solving idea yeah. that then can move somewhere and taking that risk, because people take risks all the time, mm -hmm. people would do that. Oh, yeah. Tell us about the Innovation Awards, because you said that this is one of the tools that you're using to yeah. make sure that you now are able to tap into people yeah. who have moved from that idea stage into trying to get the ideas moving. Yeah. So... The National Innovation Award, in fact, one of the functions, one of the 20 functions revolve around creating presidential awards and any other forms of awards. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, we haven't designed yet a presidential award. Uh, I, I, I am setting it in the new financial year. We're going to set up a financial uh, national presidential award that we can give during, during the National uh, Innovation Week that I'm uh, championing. Mm -hmm. uh, but the current one... Um, uh, is a program where we give, depending on how much funds are allocated on an annual basis, uh, you know, uh, for the agency and how much resource we mobilized, mm. we, are, we set up, uh, the board approves setting up, uh, you know, some funding for innovation and we run a call. So, for example, this year we ran a call around the Big Four agenda um, and publicize it as widely as possible. Uh, and the intention is to promote 
inspire, encourage, and a f- little bit financially support. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we go through a saving mechanism until we, we, we get the final um, list. So the board just approved the final list that is going to be announced uh, um, maybe tomorrow or so. Mm. Uh, so a little bit of a, um, under the radar. But uh, once I announce it, uh, all, the f- all the winners will definitely let you know. And then the funds are dispersed, basically, uh, in most cases through, um, you know, supporting agencies that okay. will help those startups, uh, you know, grow. And we, the winners at, at the moment are actually spread across several counties. I don't see anyone appearing in the same, two people appearing in the same county. Mm. Now, my vision, uh, because what I, what the, the award that I found in office as I got into office, because I'm still within the same financial year, um, is what it is. My vision is that by the time we get into the new financial year, which starts in July, I'm looking to award upwards of 50 to 100 in different categories. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes it's not so much about how much money I gave you, but it's that I recognized you. I'll give you a simple story. When I was doing my undergraduate, I developed an information system mm. um, that got an award. And I remember Manu Chandaria came to university to give me an award. He gave me a trophy, which was uh, twice the size of this phone. That's many years back, but I have it in my bedroom it's today. It's your most treasured. It gives me so much energy. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I am able to say like, you know what? You mean I'm that smart? So why am I not <laughs> doing what I need to do? Mm. And I get up every other day, you know, mm. like, let's go, let's go, you let's go. In the process, I end up attracting new partners, new funding, new uh, resources, and so forth. Mm. So it doesn't just have to be monetary. Uh, and that's why we can expect a lot of awards in the coming years. Because celebrate the people who are creating solutions. You know, I also like using this example. Well, we cut it on a foundation university, and I used to have be bothered about that. When you give case studies, which case studies do you give? And I don't know my point <laughs> of finger, my <laughs> planning. The, and, and why do we not give a, lo- a lot of local case studies? It's probably because they're not visible. I don't mm-hmm. know. Maybe, maybe we haven't done there the fair... There are many that are there, but they haven't been... Yeah, uh, so we need to mainstream them with pride yeah. and say... Professor so and so, use these examples when you're teaching your undergraduate mm. students. Mm. Very true. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Monsa, for joining us today. And you have a lot to talk about. Now, there is the week as well. So, yes. the awards are going to be um, announced in coming days, the winners? In, yes, in for this financial year, yes. This is the, uh, in a few days. Mm. Um, but uh, as we get into the new financial year, I have set up this thing called Kenya Innovation Week. Mm-hmm. And this is, this is something, when you ask me, okay, what are you up to? <laughs> and what is that will define a little bit of your legacy and so forth? We've designed what we're calling a, a Kenya Innovation Week, which will happen between uh, the 6th and the 10th of December. And we have a theme which we call the innovativeness of Kenya. Mm-hmm. And you ask me, so why didn't you say Vision 2030? Or why didn't you say Big Four Agenda? No, all mm. these are great. We are working towards them. Mm. But it takes you and me. That's the more it. I can focus on you and empower you and energize you, the more you can we can work towards specific goals, all right? right? Now, during this week, part of the awards will be there. Like, we'll try to do a lot of awards in celebrating, you know, county governments and so on and so forth. Mm. We have four tracks of things we want to look at. Skills, issues like competence-based curriculum, and how they help us prepare for innovation, all right? Because you need capacity. Second is around commercialization. How do we stro- grow our institutional mechanisms for? Uh, commercialization. Third is around B, um, you know, fourth industrial revolution. All these innovative solutions we talk about. And finally, startups. I hope to see you guys there. And you better talk about this story. because so this is happening in December? This is December. This is the, probably the only event in this country that is futuristic. Mm. You know, we celebrate events that are a little uh, bit past, like past independence. Uh, we yeah. it <laughs> this is futuristic. December to, to 6th to 10th. The Kenya Innovation Week 2021. Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Omwansa. Tony Omwansa is the CEO of the Kenya National Innovation Agency. Thank you for all the insights. Uh, once you announce those guys, you can come bring sure. them. Let's start featuring them and so sure. also celebrating those that have won. We have a deal? This year. Okay, cool. All I right. Will.